Pastor Joe here, Holy Spirit Ranch Ministries. We just got started a couple of minutes ago, but it said rotate phone. It's already on rotate, so who knows? You know the deal with this. Thank you all for being here. Pastor Joe, my friend Glenn is sitting here next to me. Whoa. <laughs> and we are in Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, South Dakota, USA. And we're on a mission of love, a mission trip here. We call it a mission of love. And Glenn's here, been here before with me. Um, I myself have been here maybe 18 times in the last nine years. And we love the Lakota people. God has sent us here just to bring the love of Jesus. Difficult environment. Um, the Indian nation in America um, have been um, abused in many ways. We're not going to get all that in this message, but they've been abused for many years, going way back in many ways by the white man, by the U.S. government, and by the supposedly church. And the abuses that were done here, everyone, natives that are listening, thank you for being here. The abuses were not done by Christians. They were lying. Christ there's nowhere in Christianity the abuses that happened. There's nowhere in the word of Jesus, in God's word, to do the things that were done to the people here. Cutting their hair off, taking their language from them, taking their names from them. That's not Jesus. Those were fake Christians here doing what they want to do, do not the will of Jesus. So that's important to get that across. The Lakota people were one of the um, original native people in America. And they go back thousands of years to my knowledge, and they definitely go back before the European settlers here. So we are now in real America, the way I look at it. So we're so happy to be here. Even though I'm not native, I have a kinship with the people here. And... Glenn gave me some, a good idea for the message today. I was wondering, what does God want me to do? And he said, why don't you just talk about some of the victories that we've seen here? Because on the Pine Ridge Reservation, people, if people don't know about it, they've, they've had many challenges. And there's a, it's the highest suicide rate in the country, especially amongst um, 14 to 34-year-olds, I think. And uh, the highest diabetes, a lot of uh, problems here. And it's a very difficult climate to live in. So it's, if you don't have money here and the right heat and the right insulation. It's, a, it's not like being in the Rocky Mountains on vacation in a ski lodge, enjoying the winter. It's a tough, tough place, but it's a beautiful place. And the people here are beautiful and they have an awesome sense of humor. They, they just, they're beautiful people. So we're happy to be here. We came out here, we hadn't been here in two and a half years because of the pandemic, I was in the Philippines, et cetera, et cetera. So we came out to reacquaint re ourselves with our friends and kind of get a, a feel of the heartbeat of what's going on out here and what changes have happened. So the message today, before I start, let me pray. Father God, as I bring this message out that you've given me, please, Holy Spirit, use me as a vessel to speak through, that it's not my feelings or my emotions, but it's your truth and your love, and that what I speak about today will encourage people and will also bring people to you. And uh, I pray in the name of Jesus, amen. So the message today is about, the title of the message is what to overcome seemingly impossible circumstances in Pine Ridge Reservation. And of course, we're gonna, I'm going to speak about, to, about some people that have had victory here overcoming impossible circumstances. And they did it through, they had one thing in common. They've got Jesus in their lives. They've got faith in Jesus in their lives and the power of Jesus. And there's a scripture in... Um, Philippians 4.13, Apostle Paul speaking to the church of Philippi, he says, I can, and it's a, it's a letter of encouragement that he wrote to the church, and he says, I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I think King, King James says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Another scripture is uh, John, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. This is believers. All believers have God's spirit living in them. No less, no more. Hi, Melissa. We're on the res. How, how are you? Um, all believers, Melissa, all of us, anyone who's a follower of Christ has God's spirit moved into them. The spirit of Christ lives in us. And 1 John, John says, the spirit that lives in you is greater than the spirit that lives in the world. The only good spirit is God's Holy Spirit. Holy spirit the spirit world is real. And uh, natives know that spirit world is real. The spirit that lives in believers gives us the power to overcome 
impossible situations. It's not our power. So that's the thread that goes through this message today. So I'm, gonna, I'm only going to be one scripture at the end of the message. But right now I'm going to mention some people. I'm not going to mention their names because I didn't get permission to talk about them on Facebook, which this message goes out all over. Thank you, my friends in the Philippines, um, our team in the Philippines, and uh, our team, um, Jason in Kenya, our friends in Saigon, and uh, in Pine Ridge, in New York, Atlanta, our ministry team in Georgia. Thank you all for being here. John, hello. We are going to get together soon. I promise when I get back, okay? Thanks for being here. So I want to um, discuss, talk about some people we met here, people that we know, that we're reconnecting with. And I'm not going to mention names, okay? Um, four or five people I'm going to talk about, how they overcame impossible circumstances. And I have to be careful not to mention names. <laughs> um, a friend of mine, just I've known here, for, what? Just make a name up. Susie? Sure. Yeah, but then it's going to be a Susie out there. I go, why did you talk about me? I was doing meth. You know? So this is a lady. <laughs> a lady. It's not a joking matter. This friend of mine that I've known here for a while, wonderful man. His wife. A um, number of years ago, maybe 10 years ago or so. She did meth for three days. And I know on the reservation, alcohol has been a problem. But a number of years ago, meth got in here. And it's, it's extremely addictive. And I was, I did meth in my life. I got off of it. I wasn't on a long miracle, but I know, I know how addictive it is and she, how addictive, more addictive than almost any drug out there. She did it for three days. A friend of hers that was doing it brought some more for her. She wanted more. She was buying some more, I guess. And the strength in her, God's strength in her, told her no. She was on the threshold. Three days of doing it and you're getting more, you're addicted. If three people do it for the first time, one becomes a lifetime addict the first time. It's that addictive. So she was three days in, she was ready to go. And she stopped right there and said, no, I don't want it. If she hadn't said no, she would have been, that would have been it. Her life would have been changed forever. She also doesn't drink and she says she's been sober for 10 years. And if you're listening, you know what I'm talking about. God bless you. So that's a huge victory. Um, another, am I doing all right, Glenn? Just let him know. That oh, you can jump in, yeah. Just let him know it was the power of the Holy Spirit. That power of the Holy Spirit. Her. Yep. That's, what the, that's the thread here. The power of God's Spirit in her. She ain't that. She's cool, but she's not that cool. You, nobody's that cool that you could just go, I am not going to do it now. But the power of the Holy Spirit in her overcame. Because the power of the Holy Spirit is stronger than any of the spirits out there. So God's spirit in us, the spirit of Christ in all believers, we've got the tool that we need to have victory because we can't do it. But when God's, when we come to Christ and we humble ourselves to God and we accept Christ as our Lord and ask him in, we immediately receive God's spirit to live in us. And that spirit is stronger than any of those evil spirits in the world because addiction is an evil spirit. It's not from God. It's from the devil. It's from hell itself. Another, another man that we have seen a couple of years, a young man, 26, 27 years old, and I'm not going to mention his name, um, gave him a Bible a few years ago. Um, he's a Christian. He's a believer. He told me he's got another Bible, a new Bible. When I met him, he was struggling with, let's just say, depression. And he's not struggling with depression anymore. He's sort of smiling. And what a handsome, handsome young man. He's got the love of Jesus coming out of him. He's a victory. The spirit living in him has given him victory over depression, over being lost and confused. And right now he's getting his GED and he's already looking for employment. So he's already looking for employment. So when he gets the GED, he can get the job that he wants to get. Another victory. I'm going to go to a minister. I'm not going to mention the town because I don't know if he wants me to reveal any of this. But there's a minister we met a couple of days ago. He's in one of the towns on the reservation. Hasn't been here that long, and he's making a difference. He's a believer, he's a Christian, and he's making a difference against all odds. Where he's at, everything, all the odds are against him. And because of the power of the Holy Spirit living in him, he's making a difference in people's lives. He's making a difference with homeless people. He's making a difference with many young people. He is affecting their lives. He's helping people get out of the great abyss. 
and being able to live and have a life. And any, any words you want to add to that? No. No, the only thing I would add to the three stories is that, is that uh, any time um, the spirit moves, it doesn't mean your life becomes perfect. Yep. So no one here's lives became perfect, but they, they avoided the tragedy that, could, that, that ultimately could have fallen them had they continued on that path. So they, they have the opportunity to, to build a better life, and they're taking that opportunity. But it, is, it doesn't mean it gets easy. Oh, no. And I'm not going to mention all the tra challenges this particular past has had, even a couple of days ago. He's having great success, but the adversary is very talented. The enemy is um, the cleverest of all God's creations. The enemy strategizes against us. So this man doesn't give up. And if you, you know, you could look back at Jesus' disciples, his apostles, what happened to them? They got taken out. So just because you're walking in the power and you're overcoming the impossible, it doesn't mean the challenges aren't huge. That's what Glenn's talking about. And with the power that lives in us, we don't give up. You know, our, the T-shirt that Glenn has on is our ministry shirt. But you don't want me putting you on here, well, so. You on okay, okay, <laughs> all right, okay, there he is. <laughs> Here's the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Speak Jesus, love people, and never give up. And that came from my spiritual father who's passed on to be with the Lord who went all over the world. And, that, and I asked his, his widow, can I, can I take that for us? She goes, Bishop always said he owned nothing. It all belonged to God. Whatever it was, he says, take it. And we live by that. Speak Jesus and love people. Never give up. You know, in ministry, we get sidetracked. Religion, religious spirit, we were talking about, gets, you get sidetracked. Sometimes you come in authentic and real with a humble heart, and you get sidetracked in the church, in ministry sometimes. And we just keep it to speak Jesus, talk about Jesus, and love people. What does that mean? That's not just a little smile or a wink. It means loving people. It means not gossiping against them, not talking behind their back, not hurting them, not being jealous of them. It means loving them no matter who they are. Jesus loved me when I was an immoral drug addict. He loved me. He loved my sin, but he loved me. And then never go up. So when you get beat down, everyone, and if you get beat down, not just by life, by serving God sometimes, you get beat down by the enemy, don't give up. The Bible says keep standing. Oh, you still, um, Ephesians 6, and we'll be still standing. Another person, I'm not going to go on too long. Oh, I must, mention, I must mention her name. Okay, we know someone here, we've known her for years. And if anybody from the res is listening, you're going to know who I'm talking about. She's probably... She might be the greatest advocate we've met for her people. And she's 75 years old now. And she hasn't stopped. She's still trucking. She hasn't given up. She's going all the time to help her people. And not just to help her people. Okay, how can I explain it? She's helping her people in many, many ways. Jobs, training, young people being trained to earn a good living. And she's helping in so many ways. Tapping she, into resources. Oh, tapping into resources and grants and dealing with the federal government and, uh, and companies. She's 75 years old and she's, I think a 30 year old would have trouble tapping into all she's doing. And, and housing, I mean, she's on all levels helping her people, but she's also into teaching her people how to fish. You give, there's, there's times you give to help people and she does that, but she also her big thing is to help people how to help themselves. And I, we saw some young people the other day, 20-year-old, 19-year-old, learning carpentry. I mean, really learning. They just put a roof on and stuff, you know. And they're learning. So when building, more building opens up here because there's a housing shortage, they'll be able to work and get paid for it and be able to buy good food and live well. So it's just awesome. Um, she's the greatest advocate I know here for her people here. And at her age, look how God's using her. And she's a believer. And I'm almost, almost finished. And where we're staying right now, in the midst of the pandemic that's been happening here, it hit the reservation hard when it hit. And there was a lot of lockdowns and quarantines and they stopped movement between, between towns. So commerce, you know, no commerce hardly, just some of the stores were open for food. Very... Very, very difficult time in a difficult place already. And where we're saying, in the midst of all this, 
They're building and expanding. <laughs> is that something, Glenn? And we saw other places in the midst of the storm, there's places that are expanding in the midst of this. They're growing and expanding. I think that's absolutely amazing. Um, with all the restrictions that they had here and, and, the, and the problems because of the, created by the pandemic, there's been expansion on the reservation. So this whole message is, is about, um, it's a message of encouragement and optimism. You know, we could talk about the suicides, and yes, that is a focus. And we're trying to hook something up. Oh boy, it just happens when the spirit speaks to me. Um, I would love to have a type of hotline for here. I don't know how we're gonna do it. We're not living here. And the Lord has spoken to me with, with our ministry on the reservation, boots on the ground. We haven't been able to do that. To have a, a the people that are really doing well here, making progress, they're here. You know, and teams come in to help them, but they're here. And I don't know how we're gonna do that. Um, we would like to have a way to help more than we do, and even if it's from our home base in Jasper, because our ministry also, we have a ministry in the Philippines, and we're gonna be going back to Kenya, and we minister to um, homeless people in difficult situations in Atlanta. So with all that said, um, also in, in the town, I can mention, well, I'm not gonna mention towns. I keep it. We met some people, some old friends of ours yesterday in a small town. It's one of the outlaying towns. It's not in the heart, but they call it the heart. And this town has a, 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 a reputation on the res as the, just a bad place to go, right? You get shot if you go in there, but it's just, that's a bad place. You know, sometimes people in the main city are kind of laughing. You're going there and they have a name for it. And our friend was telling us how in this little town, they stuck together. Even though they, I mean, the place looks a little bit like a ghost town because so many houses are boarded up. I was like, wow, half the place, not half, but a lot. But the people that are left there, um, our friends said, and they're kind of involved with the neighbors, they said, we stuck together during this. And people, food was delivered to houses and, and they, they got through. And it was very, that just shows you, you look at a place that looks like a ghost town and you know, if you were just a visitor or a tourist coming in, you go like, what happened to this place? And then we, we, we talked to the people that live there and they said, we stuck together. Wow. So, Glenn, thank you for giving me this message today. Well, because you met, you met fellow believers randomly uh, at that house with all the cars. Yeah. Prayed, they came out and asked you to pray with yeah, them. Yeah, that's cool. Somebody came out of that house in a, this town that I'm describing and uh, we, we dropped off somebody needed a ride. The guy comes out and he says, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a follower of Christ. And he wasn't like halfway like, Quasi Jesus, quasi church thing. You know, he was like, I follow Jesus. Could you pray for me? And it was really cool. I could reveal this, right? We're holding hands. He holds our hands up. You liked that, didn't you? I liked it too. He holds our hands up praying. And he goes, You know why I'm holding my hands up? I go, Why? He says, Because I'm touching the hem of Jesus. The bottom of Jesus' robe. Yeah. The bottom of Jesus' robe. Yeah. Cool. I like that. And, you know, a couple of points. We, the enemy, is busy. The enemy, everyone, they use the warfare of divide and conquer. Divide, it's happening all over the world. It's happening in my home country, America, in my hometown, on the reservation, everywhere. The enemy is dividing people to conquer us. He's getting people to hate each other more. He's getting whites and blacks and, 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 gets, and Spanish, all these different races, having a problem with each other. Instead of loving each other, house divided will fall, Republican, Democrat party, everybody. He's got everybody at each other's throats. Instead of realizing the enemy's busy dividing us to conquer us. And once he conquers us, we ain't gonna be happy. And that's what's going on. It's what's going on in our reservation too. And we're here on a mission of love and everyone, we are all created by God. You only become his child by through Christ. The only way you have God as a father is through Christ. But God creates all of us, everyone. And there's only four blood types. So you could be a Native American or a black person or somebody from India or a white dude, whoever you are, or Spanish or Colombian. And if you're dying there, and the only person there has your blood type of the four blood types, and he's got your O negative, and he's got the same, and you got it, his blood is going to get you to survive. His blood in your veins. I mean, you know, think about that. We are all created by God, and if we all would love each other more and be united, be more forgiving, we, you know how powerful that is? 
because the enemy is powerful and he's just trying to break everybody apart. So that's just my mission of love. Um, people working together. That's what we saw here. For all the challenges, specific challenges, the challenges that are very specific to the Pine Ridge Ending a Reservation. We saw people, we saw victories. We saw people working together. We saw followers of Christ with his spirit living in them, with his power overcoming seemingly impossible situations and having and experiencing victory for their people here and, and victory against the enemy. And that's what this message is. Um, I'm going to read, I'm going to end this message from Ephesians when Apostle Paul was speaking to church in Ephesus. And this is chapter 4 of Ephesians, chapter 14. A little bit of reading and I'll finish. And it's titled, it's Paul's Prayer for Spiritual Growth. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray from his glorious, unlimited resources. Don't you love that? From his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down deep into God's love. Your roots will grow down deep into God's love and keep you strong. Mary, thank you for being here. And you... And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to fully understand. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power and power that comes from God. I want to cry when I read that. So it's, his, it's all there, everyone. It's there for our taking. We're going to ask. Um, now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work. Listen to this. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church, and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's, that scripture, that prayer from Apostle Paul really sums up what we're talking about here better than I can. Thank you all for, for hearing this message of um, victory. Victory with the Lakota people. Not just Lakota, other people live here too. Victory on the reservation, Pine Ridge Reservation. Beautiful place. And Father God, I, I pray for everyone listening that this message is about here, but it's about your power in all believers. We just we should all read um, this prayer of uh, Ephesians 3.14. You read this, we should probably read it daily, just remind ourselves what's in us. You know, that's the power of God living in us. His spirit is how we have victory. We can't do it on our own. Yeah. Glenn knows that. I know that. Where would we where would we be right now without that power in us? We fall back into some garbage. I wouldn't be here. We can, oh, he says I wouldn't be here, but that's we wouldn't be here like in dead and not not on the way to heaven. Think about that. That's pretty serious. And uh, I pray, Father God, that this message, your word, touches our hearts to encourage us to walk in that power, to know we can't do it on our own, but we are a big part of it because we need to turn to you. It's not autopilot. We need to turn to you. And as our father, I know you get great pleasure out of helping your children as our God and as our father. I pray, Father God, that anyone who's listening to this message has not given their life to God and to Jesus. Do it now. Just say yes. It's not hard. I know this, the devil, the enemy wants you to say no. And so I've, I've, been, I've been with people that they wanted to say yes to Jesus and they actually couldn't speak. They couldn't get the word out. We had to pray against the spirit and preventing them from even saying Jesus, seriously. They wanted to, but they, they couldn't say it. If you got the enemy working on you, not letting you say yes, just I pray against the enemy now in the name of Jesus. You have no power over any of us. And for someone now, this person that's trying to come into the kingdom, you have no power over them and they are going to speak the word, yes, Jesus.
be my Lord, be my Savior. I know you died for my sins. I turn from my sins and I turn to God. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. I ask you to give me God's Holy Spirit to live in me. Give me power. Guide me. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And you might, now you're, I don't know if you want this, but you're my brother and sister. <laughs> right, Glenn? And you're a child of God. Not just creation, but now you belong to him. You're his most precious possession. You belong to God. Check us out, everyone, on www Holy Spirit Ranch Ministries. And uh, YouTube, subscribe. We're on Instagram, Facebook. God bless you all. Thank you for being here for this message. God bless. Bye.